This is a follow-up of Ray's Magnetic Gate Part 2. I have a setup here, the Good Experimenters Kit. I have my magnets, I have my activator bar, I have an end bar. I have it set up so that everything's very sensitive. We can see the forces at play as the car comes through the gate. So we'll go ahead and do that. As the car approaches the gate, we want to have a very low uh, input resistance. If there is an input resistance of the incoming rotor magnets, then this bar will be pushed away. But if the gate is actually assisting in the operation of the firing, then it will be trying to pull the car into it. So I'll hold on to it to begin with. You can see that's, that's what's happening. It's trying to pull it through. So that's good. That's one requirement of a good gate. The other requirement of a good gate is that it comes through cleanly and pushes through. Now if there are forces trying to pull back, then our indicator bar here will actually try to lift itself to follow the car trying to pull it back. But if the bar pushes back this way, we know it's trying to push it through. So we'll go ahead and fire it here, coming through. And then I'll come back slowly. So if we have a working gate, then this bar will push back this way. Uh, trying to push the car. Of course, I'll have more force coming backwards and I'll try and push it away if it's working correctly. Go slow. And you can see how it's pushing the bar that direction, which means it's trying to push the car that way. Uh, we have a pretty nice uh, breakthrough here. I found one little spot way out here, uh, it might be it right there, the interplay of the, all the forces of the magnets, but very, very slight. Uh, if you're trying to get a perfection, <laughs> then just so you're aware of it. But it's very minor. The magnitude of the output is so much greater than the input magnitude, and that's what you're trying to have in a magnetic gate and also satisfy uh, what I believe is the definition for overunity that there's more output force than there is input force to get it to fire. So it seems to uh, have those two satis the satisfaction there. So also about the board here, I have a uh, uh, breadboard, chopping board. I smoothed it down. You can either use a really fine emery paper I use a uh, piece of 2x4 and I just rub it back and forth very briskly trying to get it as smooth as possible. Also when I first started my experiments I was coming up with all kinds of different results and I had this uh, tile and finally I thought maybe it's the tile. Sure enough, it was not level. There was a bow in the middle. And I was having input resistances when there were none and output pullback when there were none. So that's very important to have a smooth uh, surface. If you're just, and also my plate, it was also bowed in the middle. So I had to find something that was nice and level. This works nicely. So anyhow, my car, I have 10 neo magnets on it. Seems to be pretty optional. If you have too many, then pullback starts to come in. If you don't have enough magnets, then not enough power. Also, I have this as an adjustment. You can pull the end bar up, see how it fires, how it works, the input, output. If you have it too low, what happens with the input and outputs. So it's a nice experimental kit. If you want to learn the principles, you're an inventor, you're curious, and also take it to the next step. So we'll go ahead and fire that again, 
and uh, I don't on my level surface I do not use a level the eye is not fine enough so what I do to make sure is to see if it fires about the same distance one direction as the other direction and that gives me an indication that uh, then it's pretty level but if you're, again if you're just trying to figure out if it has more output power than input power then uh, you know that's not too important but the, the fine points of everything uh, the car the magnets are just sloped a little bit up you can use a little bit of clay that's what I do and play with the angles every time I work with my car make sure my uh, wheels are very clean just one little speck will stop everything also my board make sure it's nice and clean wipe it with a dry paper towel make sure there's no little grit you can't see and uh, have everything so it's uh, you know take your time bring it in at a uh, straight angle this is a type of setup that works only on straight angles not a rotary disc I think I covered that in another film but you can go in diagonal lines as long as you're going straight and uh, that'll work also so uh, somehow this is a nice experimental kit and it shows you all the forces in play this side here is our inactive passive side there's not anything going on uh, it's just a passive static force we're using the magnets as a static force this side here is your dynamic uh, side kinetic it's changed into that by your activator bar this is the key to it uh, and it really makes it fire my activator bar comes out far enough from the south side that this is basically a one pole uh, magnet and I covered that in, in the other film also so anyhow we'll fire that again why this works I have some guesses but it's pretty obvious we're taking a static field and we're taking it into a kinetic uh, output this is a nice clean setup it'll show you how things are working what's working how they operate and so I thank you for watching and we'll see you later